Annie here. A little over 20 years ago, I went through what some would call the dark night of the soul. I was in deep emotional pain, and that's a story in and of itself, but I just, in a lot of ways, felt like there was no hope or I couldn't see a future. I didn't really know what to do, but there was something telling me that I should try to figure this out as bad as I felt. So I went on a journey. I took six months off. I mean, I literally canceled everything I was doing for six months. And I spent that time communing with God. I would pray. I would worship in the privacy of my own home. I would journal. I wrote songs. It was an incredibly healing time. And I, I read a lot of books, too. I read a lot of books. But the interesting thing is, I grew closer to God than I had ever been before. Especially through the worship that I was doing. I would put on music and I would just worship for seemed like endless hours and I knew that I was healing but I knew it was going to be a long process but when I look back on it I see that it was just such a beautiful process even though it was really challenging but again through all that worship I came to know God so intimately I really began to see how mighty and powerful he was I don't know, I guess I always knew that intellectually, but somehow the worship brought it so close to me. And I just, I just knew that this God that I believed in could heal me if I did my part too, you know? And so again, I, I was doing my part and I was going to do my part for the rest of my life. That six months was a great little isolated time period where I was able to just strictly focus on, on God and my relationship with him. But, but I knew that I would continue on that path throughout the rest of my existence here on planet Earth, even if I couldn't devote that much time to it every day. But anyway, again, it was just, it was eye-opening. To see God, finally, to really see God, you know. I have a friend, and one time she asked me, how do I define God? And I told her, I said, I don't think you can really define God. I mean, that's something that we'll never be able to do with our human brains. But I know that God is here. He is everywhere. He is in me. He is in you. He is in everything. And he doesn't have any form. He doesn't have any form. And that was so clear to me back in those days, even when I was a Christian, I realized that God didn't have a form. And I guess I missed that part in the Old Testament where he says that he has no form because I, like most Christians, didn't really read thoroughly the Old Testament, you know, or Tanakh is what it's actually called. I didn't really read it thoroughly. I just, I knew the stories of King David and Job and things like that, but I, I never understood it. I never really understood it in its entirety. So anyway, but back to what I was saying about really kind of coming to know God in a way I hadn't before. And I guess that brings me to what I wanted to say today in this video is that even back then, I saw with my spiritual eyes that God could do anything independent of all of us and the angels. He could do anything. I mean, he was God. He was the creator of the heaven and earth. He has no limitations. Therefore, now I understand <laughs> that he doesn't even need a mediator. He doesn't need a sacrifice to save us. He doesn't need anything to do what he does. So, I can kind of see now the limitations of Christianity where it's telling people that they need God to send a son, which is really himself in human form, to die for their sins so that he can forgive them. It's like 
So God actually needs a vehicle to forgive somebody is what Christianity is saying. And, you know, it's all convoluted and it's made up from this false narrative that the Jews had to sacrifice animals to be forgiven and to go to heaven. I mean, so this whole thing with Jesus is made up from this misconstrued concept about the Jewish sacrifices, which were actually just offerings. But anyway, again, God is God. I mean, he's God. Do you think he needs anything, <laughs> any vehicle to forgive you of what you've done? Come on. Come on. He's God. I mean, he like breathed life into the planet. Do you think he needed any help? He doesn't need any help. You know, I've heard Christian pastors say, well, you know, God sent Jesus because of the problem with sin. He had to deal with the problem of sin. It's like, are you kidding me? God doesn't have a problem with sin. People have a problem with sin. They cannot believe that they could just go to God and ask for forgiveness and they'll be forgiven. I mean, why? Why can't people believe it when that's what's true? And we can see over and over again in Tanakh that when people did something wrong, their key to forgiveness was repentance, right? King David said it's not sacrifices that you need. It's a broken and contrite heart, okay? It's not those sacrifices again. And I've done videos on the sacrifices and what they actually meant and their purpose. But for today's video, again, I'm trying to make the point like God doesn't need anything to forgive us but our repentant heart. That's it. And actually, he probably he doesn't even need that, really. If he just wanted to forgive you, he could forgive you. So it's ludicrous to me to think that in order to forgive people, he had to come to earth in human form and then have himself killed so that he could forgive people. I mean, that is so limiting to God. And please, people, please go and read Tanakh. Read it from start to finish and see the mightiness of our Lord. See the mightiness of God and what he did in people's lives. He and he alone and he says, I am your only savior. He says, I am one. I am one. And what is Jesus? Two. And what is adding the Holy Spirit? Three. And that's against what it says in Tanakh about God. I am one. I am your only savior. That's it. And that's because he's so great that he can save you. He can save you. He doesn't need anything to assist him in saving you. It's plain as day in Tanakh. It's plain as day. And, you know, so many people, so many Christians are starting to see this. It's It really is amazing, amazing that people are beginning to see this. And they're coming out of Christianity in droves and they're looking for information and if you're one of those people, I have a ton of resources on my website, www.insidethefaith.com. I also have free ebooks, Jesus, Messiah, or Myth, and Defending the Faith that you can download absolutely free. I don't even expect you to give me an email address. But check out those resources and check out Steve Eisenhower's resources and his videos. He's at the Exodus Project. I mean, he is so brilliant. And if you are looking for greater understanding about this journey out of Christianity and into the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you will really benefit from Steve Eisenhower's materials. There are so many other great people out there, and I encourage you to look for it, to look for it because it's there. And again, my website, www.insidethefaith.com. And as always, I appreciate you watching my channel, sharing my videos, liking. And also, I really, really am grateful for your comments because they're eye-opening and I learn so much. I have more great information coming in the near future and I will see you in the next video. What do you do when you find out the God you've been praying to isn't who you think he is? 
Suddenly, so many things you've been taught in the Christian church are not adding up. And now, you don't know where to turn. You need answers, but before you do anything, you must find out the source of the truth. It's been staring at you your whole life, yet you never saw it. So now, are you finally ready to receive eye-opening revelations on everything from the questionable roots of Christianity and the pagan origins of Jesus to the shocking ways in which the Hebrew scriptures were altered for nefarious purposes? The veil has been lifted. The information is at hand. And your journey has just begun.